I'm just going to ask the question, has this year been a disappointment? No. No, it has not. It has not. No. But, but it's also not blown me away. Oh. And I, I feel selfish. I'm blown away. I feel selfish and I feel greedy I'm when over I there. talk about <laughs> <laughs> Boom, Acme, so Looney Tunes-esque um, <laughs> explosion out of the studio. No, for me, it's been a year of good games. Mm. A lot of good games. Very few that I would rave about as being recommendable to everyone. Our right. personal favorites are five stars. Mm -hmm. And I can understand people maybe saying the year has been a disappointment from that perspective. I think in terms of sheer bangers, for me personally, there haven't been as many as 2023. Right. But the reason I can't complain is that I have never had more to play, more that I am looking forward to, more games that have been good. Um, I've never played more in a year, and I've never wanted, in a way, to play more in a year because there's always something else I've wanted to get to. Mm. And I'm sure we'll run down a lot uh, oh, yeah. later on um, as we record. But I think overall, I think to say it's been a disappointing year, to say there hasn't been any games, I feel like I'm living in a different reality to I some think, people. Because I think there's a wider conversation on where gaming is at, like as an art form, as a medium. Like um, we talked about this in the office a couple of times, but we've never really put it on video. Um, to me, it's like, it's a maturation point. Like we're hitting a point where gaming is just a medium. Like you would never say just because a certain set of albums, like your favorite albums didn't come out or a certain tier of album didn't come out, that music sucks. Like mm. you would always look at the wider pool. You wouldn't, let, maybe right now you would say a film sucks because most blockbusters aren't doing very well, but you wouldn't say the medium itself sucks. Right. It's like, it's an access point. And I think that that's, an, it's interesting because it's not like um, there have been all sorts of five-star head turners in 2024, but the medium is strong. The quality of titles there, the breadth of quality is insane. Um, and I made a list as I want to do. Yeah. Um, of all the stuff that blew me away, and then I've got a various different tiers of titles that are in here as well. But to run them down slash throw them at you, Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, Tekken 8, Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth, Metaphor Refantasio, Dragon's Dogma 2, Helldivers 2, Nobody Wants to Die, Rise of the Ronin, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Dragon Ball Z, Fighter, sorry, Sparking Zero, Kinutsugami, Wrath of the Goddess, Astrobot, and Stellar Blade. They're all bangers. Yeah. They're all either five star or four and a half star bangers. Right. Like recommendable AF, you should play them. Like Astrobot's the best platform that we've had in years. Kunitsugami is the coolest, most innovative Capcom game we've had in years. Like there are, and Stellar Blade is like a, the second game from a studio that like took the world by storm. Like all of this stuff is to be celebrated. Um, and also in the indie space, Crow Country, thank goodness you're here, I love. Like the fact that that exists is phenomenal. Um, Neva being the sequel to Gree, like the indie space is thriving as well. Um, and then you've got the remake space, which like, yes, can be a bit tiring, but then sometimes you get things like the Doom remasters that are like so handcrafted and phenomenally done. Yeah. Or the Worms Anniversary Edition with interviews from the team and everything. Like, I think the medium is stronger than it's ever been. And I don't necessarily think we need the head turners if you can nail this breadth overall. I, I know what you mean. And I'd throw in literally off the top of my head some to add to that list, like, I don't know if you mentioned Pacific Drive. Did no, you mention no. that? Pacific Drive. Um, others that I've just forgotten about. What the hell is that about? Still <laughs> Silent Wakes Hill the Deep. 2, baby. Silent Hill 2. Um, you know, stuff that's still to come. Stalker 2, Dragon Age. We've had a lot of games this year. Mm. Um, too many, some would say, <laughs> including myself, because I haven't been able to pay for or keep up with them all. And I think you're right. Like, there haven't been, like, those massive hitters. But if you're, if you're into a wide variety of games, and it's, it's, it's not an issue if you're not, if mm. you you have if you are just playing games for RPGs or first person shooters of course that's totally viable mm -hmm. but if you are someone who likes likes to dip into a bunch of stuff I think you've been I, I would say you've been well fed this year yeah. like again maybe not knock out 10 out of 10s but I, I always of course I'm going to go back to Sony I always go back to Sony and PlayStation but I've seen a lot of discourse from this office included where people are saying like, well, Sony's had a crap year they've released mm -hmm. nothing there's no reason to boot up the PlayStation 5 and I'm thinking that could be true from a first party slate, but mm. they've had so many bangers. They've had Stellar Play, they've had Rise of the Ronin, Black Myth Wukong, mm -hmm. Astro Bar, Pacific Drive here, yeah. that I mentioned before, Silent Hill 2. And it's like, I, I, I think if that's classed as an off year, I want to see them on an on <laughs> year because what will they have and what are the expectations now? And I'd, I think when you do list them all out like you have, and again, that's not by any means extensive. There have been a bunch of others on top of that that other people have loved that I'm yet to get to. Mm. Like it's been, I worry about it being a last hoorah, right. I'm, I must admit, but I think as a year in a vacuum, if you can put it in a vacuum, if you can dissociate it with everything else that's happening in the industry mm. and the way that a lot of these teams are being treated with these games post launch it's been a if you're just there to pick up games and wondering what to play next like how are you not 
a bit overwhelmed by the amount of stuff. I do, I mean, the thing is, I will throw in, like, it's obviously viable to be disappointed by like, the way the industry has gone. Yeah. It is so big, it's so bloated, like, to the point where it's unsustainable, hence the amount of bodies that are strewn in its wake, like, to the point of 13,000 people are currently laid off across the last couple of years. Like, it, that's completely valid, and, and it's part of the conversation. Um, I'm just saying that it's not, I personally don't think it's a disappointment. I think the quality is there. There are more titles that I've genuinely loved this year than last year, and last year was viewed as this big, massive year for the industry. Um, but I do think that it is interesting, the change of uh, marketing, the change of what the industry feels like as we grew up. Like, obviously, it was so much smaller, um, you know, and you were able to, a smaller amount of titles got more marketing, got out there a lot more. There were more talking points. And I feel like growing up, more people played a bigger variety of titles. The average mm. person played a Tiger Woods game or maybe played a Virtua Tennis or something like that. Um, they weren't as siloed off and their time wasn't taken up as much by live service elements or continually supported titles. Um, I think that's all changed. Changed. And like the AAA space, obviously the term didn't exist back in the day, even though you did have top tier titles like Metal Gear Solid 2, GTA 3, whatever it is, um, to go all the way back. But um, that's what's changed. Yes. Like the industry is just so big. Mediums get bigger, like genres get wider. Um, and like if you're into music, you're going looking for those albums and those artists. You're not just listening to the radio. Um, and so I think that's where gaming is at. I think, yeah. I think it's been there for a few years now, but I think that this year, um, that conversation is coming up a lot that like it, it, everything's disappointing and it's like not everything is like mm. it's it's you've got to go looking for it to a degree um, but I think the bangers are there and they are the quality is there um, and the medium is thriving it's just that you've got to go looking for it I think you're spot on about that idea of an almost cultural shift with how we mm. approach video games because I'm with you for most of my life I have obviously, you know, indulged my own tastes, looked for indie games or mm. under the radar games that I know I'm going to like that might not have huge success in the mainstream or mm -hmm. be considered 10 out of 10 bangers or whatnot. But for the most part, I can't deny that I was there for the industry serving me stuff up, especially in the AAA space, yeah. to give me must-play games, no matter the genre that I couldn't miss. And while we still have that here and there, you'll still get an Elden Ring or you'll still mm. get... Um, <laughs> A cyberpunk or The Witcher when it comes out, or Fallout, I love those whatever. Games, yeah. Like you'll still get those events, but like you said, they're so few and far between now. And I do think it's becoming more like other mediums, where you are seeking out the stuff that you like, and not everything served up now is going to be to your tastes. And that's something I had to deal with film within film years ago, like mm. about probably about five years ago, maybe just before the pandemic, where I used to be someone who used to sort of pride themselves on keeping up or trying to keep up with everything, like mm. watch all the blockbusters um, alongside the indie films, alongside the awards darlings or whatnot. And at a certain point, it was just like, why? Like, I <laughs> do I enjoy watching these blockbusters? I'm not a huge yeah. Fast and Furious guy. I'm not gonna buy all these subscription services like Netflix or Prime to watch, mm. what is this? The, Dwayne Johnson and Ryan Reynolds films that I've already <laughs> forgotten about. You know, like those. CIA Day? Was that the Kevin Hart one? No <laughs> idea, man. These these movies that essentially like look, so many people watch, but why would I do that? Like, yeah. if, if the discourse isn't there, if they're not being treated as these events, like I'll just seek out what I want to seek out. And I think there's pros and cons to that. One, mm. I think it kind of in, encourages like you to maybe broaden your taste or maybe to specialize or maybe to only focus on what you like. Mm. But I do think that kind of comes at the detriment of everyone kind of rallying around certain releases and having them be, be big talking mm. points. Like, I think it's mm. very easy now. I don't know how you think, mm -hmm. but as someone who does this for a job, who's someone who like lives and breathes video games personally and professionally, it's never been easier to ignore a big game and not right. intentionally say that's crap, I don't want to play it, but just for a game to come out to sell 20 million copies and for myself personally, not to feel a pang of, I should be playing that so mm. I have an opinion on it so I can talk about it. It just feels like these 20 million selling games come out and it's like, it can be over there and it's right. for a different audience almost. It's probably broken for a few months anyway, <laughs> well, so you're probably better off waiting. There is that as well. But I don't know how you feel about that where a lot of stuff, no matter how big it gets, like I never feel the draw to it. I, mm. I don't know, I don't know about that. I'm definitely opposite in that regard. Right. I, li I like being like, I like being part of the conversation, but the thing is, like, like that idea of games being events. Elden Ring was an event game. Cyberpunk was an event game. The Last God of War was, um, Horizon was to a point. Like those games that everyone is playing. Um, I love that stuff. I feel like Dragon Age is going to be one of them at the end of the month, um, and Call of Duty will be as well. And um, yeah, I like that. Con I like being part of that conversation. Um, but the, those conversations go on for a lot longer now than they used to. Um, and like, yeah, you 
got the industry side of it where certain things are broken or whatever. But that idea of um, the games being the event, I feel like gaming was the event when we were growing up because mm. the industry itself was making so many strides forward, whether it's graphically, gameplay wise, whatever. There weren't as many money men involved um, or like money people involved. Like you literally have um, Bloomberg Station Schreier writing a book about the evolution of uh, Blizzard and how they literally brought in members of Procter & Gamble to sell games like soap bars, to treat them like products, to turn it over like that because there's billions of dollars involved in the industry. Yeah. That just was not the case, like even 10 plus years ago. Um, and so being part of gaming when it was smaller in itself, that was the event. That's probably the feeling that people miss hmm. um, because that went hand in hand with a smaller selection of titles being better produced. There was more development time. Um, they were less ambitious in terms of how many moving parts there were or whatever yeah. it is. Um, and every everyone was playing them, quote unquote. And that's changed because the medium's got so much bigger for better or worse. Um, to bring it back to 2024, like I said, the quality is there. Um, it is just an interesting talking point. There aren't, aren't necessarily any conclusions. It's just that whenever anyone says that they find gaming to be worse or they find gaming to be disappointing or whatever, I can only do the Will Smith meme and point at like 20 titles <laughs> um, from the last two months that are phenomenally worth your time. Even I, I can too, but even then I, you know, I, I know I said at the beginning that I don't think it's a disappointing year. I do think it's valid, like you mentioned, mm. to, to say like, oh, 2024 was disappointing for me. I can, yeah, I can yeah, yeah. you know, you look at the games that have released that have been, you know, these bangers, Tekken or Like a Dragon. And I think it's totally fair for people to say, you know what, that's not on my wavelength necessarily. Those aren't the types of games that I gravitate towards. Therefore, this has been a disappointment for me. I think mm. that's totally fine. Like mm. I, I would say it has been a less enjoyable year in terms of the big hitters than 2023, than 2023 for me. But mm. I think, yeah, like you said, when you kind of, when you start painting it with like these broad strokes and say, oh no, it, the industry is disappointing because there wasn't something maybe that I gravitated towards this year or mm. maybe I missed something. I think that's when it's it's a bit of a shame because it, for better or worse, like these communities are becoming um, in gaming, like they are becoming like film where they're becoming like a little bit more separate. Like mm. you said, we're kind of, we don't feel all as one now. Everyone's kind of enjoys their own thing, which is really cool. But at the same time, it does feel like a more disparate industry to be a fan of, I yeah. guess. No, man, totally. And it's like that, like I said, we're calling it like event gaming or event movies. Like there was such an energy around um, the Barbie and Oppenheimer coming out. Right, yeah. That is likely the energy that was more, so, like, you know, that people miss. Like, I mean, I, like, we had that every few months with the MCU when it was in, when it was absolutely flying. Same with Star Wars until it kind of fell off. But like still, it's like, can that can that come back? Yes. Um, but I think that the, like I said, there's a medium thriving underneath that. I just think, I just think the, the wider conversation around what it feels like when a game releases um, is more scattered at the minute. Like oh, it's yeah. sort of, okay, what are you playing? Like most people playing stuff from months ago, years ago, like console sales are dropping off, average play time. Like the, the PSN top 10 has been like the same for about 10 years now. It's GTA 5, it's Minecraft, it's Call of Duty, Roblox is in there from the last few years. Like most of those top 10 slots are taken up with old games. Yeah. Um, and people are happy playing those old games. And it's, it's just interesting. Like GTA 6 will be a major nexus for everyone to come in and all, all talk about it. Um, but that's one title in at least one title for next year. Like yeah. everything is way more spaced out. Do you think that we've all kind of found our niches as well mm. by now? Like how like hundreds of millions of people watch and play first person shooters, you know, those live service games, mm -hmm. Fortnite, Warzone or whatever it is. Um, hundreds of million people have their Dark Souls communities or their Rainbow Six Siege communities or World of Warcraft communities, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And like, that's cool because there is so much community within that, but I wonder if that makes things feel separate because you kind of get entrenched in, in what you like mm -hmm. and you've got you've got like this this world you can kind of live in, right? I think well, that's, that's kind of cool. Like... But I think that also, sorry, no, no, just to ramble on a bit more, mm -hmm. I think that also links to how games release as well, where you have, you know, obviously we've always had a bunch of different platforms. Right now we've got PlayStation 5, Xbox, Nintendo, and PC, but then we've also got bespoke subscription services where you can only play things if you um, have a PlayStation, but also get uh, PlayStation Plus or Xbox and have Game Pass and things are released on there. Or, you know, we have staggered releases where you mm. get Phasmophobia blowing up years ago and now it's finally coming to consoles mm. and you don't have that cohesion I suppose with the release and the community that we used to have and I'm mm. not saying that is even bad necessarily I think it's there's pros and cons to it but I think for me that would be an explanation of why things feel so 
feels so missable. I think the community is a great word for it because again, I think that gaming being part of the gaming industry felt like the community. It wasn't the specific franchise. Obviously they existed. Yeah. There were Final Fantasy fans, GTA fans, whatever it is. But being part of being a gamer was such a, it was, uh, gaming only became like a mainstream talking point after Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, um, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. And that was like 2008 or something. Um, like if you grew up in the industry, then you remember the times that it wasn't the thing people talked about. Like the idea that people just being okay with video games, that was a late 2000s thing and it went from there. Um, but I think the community was so diehard because it was more of an underground thing. It was a new thing. It's like mm. punk rock or whatever it is. Like it takes time for it to blow up. Um, and now that it has blown up, that community is so thin, stretched so thin, um, that everything is atomized and you're better picking a genre, picking a franchise and um, ensconcing yourself with that. And you have the Discord alongside it. You have the Reddit pages. Like you can siphon yourself off. Yeah. You could only play Souls games and you would be completely served. Absolutely. And I will only play <laughs> Souls games and I will be completely <laughs> served. Absolutely. If that's a reality I have to take, Scott, I will I will mm. take the bullet and do that. <laughs> but no, I think you're right. There's definitely, I don't know when it happened, but there must have been a shift where gaming, even though it's always been successful, you know, it is now the number one entertainment, or at least most profitable entertainment thing. It brings in the most money. Mm. Um, it is like the thing, right? And that is so cool, but it's made it so big, like mm. you said, where it has become bigger than it used to be, again, for both good and bad. And it, it, I do kind of compare it to like film where in, I don't know, in the 70s and the 80s, like before VHS, before DVDs and what have you, you would go to the theater to watch a movie and the community rallied kind of around that. And mm -hmm. you had big movies and you had small movies, but then you had different ways to view things. You had the rise of television, you had mm -hmm. the rise of subscription services, and then it became more individualistic. And I think we're at that stage with gaming where it's mm -hmm. so individualistic now. And like I said, both good and bad from that, but it definitely makes it feel different yeah, than yeah. how it used to be. And it is that, like, the death of the monoculture. Like, there's a whole wider thing about the idea. Like you said, you mentioned movies, 70s, 80s. Everyone, quote unquote, is watching Terminator, Star Wars, Robocop, whatever. Um, and over time, it, like, the, the, there are those seminal releases that's, oh my God, you haven't seen Blah, because you were expected to see it. Um, and I think gaming's had that. That's just where we're at. I think gaming's at that same point. Um, and like I said, those conversations are so much wider and um, which games are part of the conversation, like that waxes and wanes so much. Yeah. Um, but occasionally you get those event titles and it reminds me of what it was like growing up with this stuff or what it has been like for most of the generations until the last couple. Yeah. Um, and so that's why I latch onto those, that all that stuff. Like I want to I wanna play Dragon Age, not because I not just because I want to, but I want to be part of that conversation. Like it's Helldivers 2, it's all that kind of stuff. Don't get me wrong, man. Like I, I miss it too. And I don't want to <laughs> sound like an old man of like, oh, I used to love it back in the day, but I think you've even seen it with our content. If mm. you've listened to this podcast or watched our videos for a long time, back in the day, you and I, when we would do Game of the Year, our mm. list would be so similar and yeah. the sort of friction and the entertainment, if you, if you liked that stuff at the time, would be where has Scott and Josh placed these roughly same selection of games? And I know for certain when we go into the end of this year, it's going to be practically like two different lists, right? <laughs> yeah. And I think that's cool because it's more variety, but you do miss that kind of, oh, we're all on the same track. We're all playing around the same things yeah. because now we are so divergent. And you've seen that in even how people who do this for a living talk about the games that they're playing. That's perfectly put. Like that, that's definitely the industry that I grew up with. And, and we did so many of those videos and it is that, it is um, accepting that that has fundamentally changed. Um, and that less games are the ones, like 10 games or whatever, are the ones that most people are gonna play. Um, that I think is at the heart of why you could then view the overall year as being disappointing. Um, but I think it, it's all valid, I think, especially, like I said, if you grew up with this stuff, um, adjusting to what the industry feels like. And um, and it's not necessarily that it's gonna stay like this, it might contract again, like the amount of layoffs, the amount of changes in the way that games are put together um, might reduce it back down again, but there's so much money to be made at those um, upper levels that a lot of people like the Bobby Codex of the world are gonna keep pushing and make it wider and dilute it more and sell more and whatever. And until that's out the way, um, it is it is a more boring industry in that regard.